Man Wei Chong and Kai Wun Ti, the eighth seed. So, so it's India Malaysia, couple of semi finals here in the w w women's doubles and mixed doubles, or men's doubles, I should say. So India have a real good chance in the men's doubles. Three of the four semi finalists are from India. And the women's doubles as well, a, a good chance as well. It's a Malaysia India, a Malaysia India matchup as well in that one. That's on court two. We can tell you that Harita Manazil, Hari Narayanan, and Ashna Roy are going to be playing Anna Cheong and Chio Mei Shin in the women's doubles. So there's the men's singles, and this is the ladder. This is how they got there. Arno Merkle, we saw him beat Mitun Manjunath in a pretty good battle, that one. Now we are moving to the other men's semifinals. Nat Wynn of Ireland is coming on against uh, Luca Clebout of France. Klebut's uh, got his teammates here. They've played once before the Leaning Denmark Challenge 2019. Klebut won that 22-20, 21-10. Uh, a lot has changed since then. Now for Nat Win, born in Vietnam, left the country for a new life in Ireland with his parents and older sister when he was just six. Started playing badminton at a local club. In fact, even was a footballer as well for a little while. Played striker for his local club team. Was playing a decent level, but opted for badminton. Gold medalist in the 2016 Under-17 Championships in a boys' singles event. And also won the bronze medal of the doubles event when he partnered with Paul Reynolds. At the same year, he also clinched the men's singles in the Irish National Championships and won his first senior international title at the Polish International in the men's doubles event with Reynolds and then the men's singles title at the Welsh International. Just 21 years of age. So hasn't this is certainly the furthest he's got in any BWF World Tour tournament. Luca Klebut is 29 years of age, 74th in the world at the moment. His highest ranking was 56th. That was achieved in December of 2016. He's from the city of Bordeaux in France. Had a good few questions with him, which I'll tell you about a little bit later on. But uh, this is his path to the quarterfinal, the semifinals, I should say. And uh, stiffest challenge came from Malaysia's Chum Jun Wei in the last round. That one took almost 40 minutes. Otherwise, most of his games against opponents have been only in single figures. Now, Win is uh, just 21 years of age, playing his height is 170 centimeters, and his highest ranking is what it is right now, 44th in the world. As I mentioned, born in Hanoi, capital of Vietnam, but then moved to Ireland. Samir Verma had to retire with a problem, an injury problem, in the first round. That was the fourth seed. After that, he's had a fairly straightforward time of it. Adul Raknam Kul and of Thailand, Julian Karagi of Belgium. Reza Roshanomid of Iran is the umpire. And Gaurav Khanna is the service judge. So just wiping down the courts and yeah, some very good was listening to some interviews with both these players and 
Very interesting to hear from Nat Wynn, who's a confident young man, and he says he can be, at least in his mind anyway, an Olympic champion one day. He said, of course, it was a massive change for him moving to Ireland when he was just six. He left behind his family and friends. The weather, the culture, the food, all so different, of course. He didn't have the language at all when he first moved to Ireland. He struggled with English, as many people do when they make their move. But he said his parents took a big risk, and it paid off. Biggest match, certainly, for Nat Wynn. Oh, great defense from uh, Claire Boot, but it is Wynn who wins the first point. Good kill at the net. What a rally that was. Very long to start with, isn't it? You don't normally necessarily see that at the beginning. But uh, that might just set the tone for this match. Just dropped it over the net and Klebut couldn't quite get there. That is out, and another long, long rally. These two are really playing out some big points here. 38 shots, there you go. That's how long it is. And uh, that won't be good for either player in terms of stamina. Good attack there from Klebut. But it's a great start here for Wynn, who's won all four of the first points on offer. Klebut, though, is obviously far more experienced, eight years older. European men's team championships. He's got silver in 2016 in the men's team event and bronze in 2018, bronze in 2020. He's won a number of International Series events. And he finally gets his first point on the board. Won the White Knights in 2016, the Monaco International, and the Turkey International in 2017, and the Estonian International in 2018. So this would be a big, big moment for him to get this far now in the Side Money International. Well, he'll be happier with that, Claire Boots. He's moving his opponent around, but they are playing some monumental rallies, aren't they? Not easy. A 
And that is out. This is very good. Come back here from Klebut, who said he picked up badminton at eight years old when he used to go with his father on Friday evenings to see his brother, watch his brother at badminton practice. And then he said he wanted to do the same, as is quite often the case, isn't it? Power there and the jump smash from Wynn. And of course, the carrot, the motivation for Klebut is to play his countryman, Arno Merkley. By the way, they are roommates as well, so that would be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> to be playing each other. Oh, nice net kill. Initial drop. He knew that all Wynn could do was play the lift. With a vertical racket there on the drop, and then play the kill nicely. Oh, he's hit that beautifully into the far corner. Had no real uh, role models growing up. Uh, looking at badminton stars. And that is out. Win, on the other hand, by the way, his hero was the Malaysian legend Lee Chong Wei. And he said he watched him at the uh, 2012 games. Lee Chong Wei. And uh, he said he remembered crying there when Li Chong Wei lost. Well, Wynn is had that big lead, then Claire Boot caught up, and then he's just not let his opponent get near him. Still has that very small lead. Of course, in 2012, Lee Chong Wei lost to Lin Dan, and, uh, and that win said he had a bit of a cry at that one, but he said, at that point, I want to win. I want to win the Olympics for him, <laughs> which is... Very endearing, of course, as a little boy. He was just 12 years old when that happened. <coughs> Better rally. A few drives there from both of them. Into the net from Klebut. That's uh, from uh, Wynn, I should say. Twenty five shots at one, so every point, every other point virtually is being hotly contested. Lovely play on the slice there from Wynn. And that is in. Oh, that has been overruled. That uh, goes point goes to win instead. Well, there's absolutely no doubt about that one. It is certainly out. And, uh, yeah, very clearly there. So he's now three points clear win.
will win. We may have a very strong Irish accent, having spent the last 15 years there. He says, though, that Vietnamese culture is still very important to him and his parents. The hardworking ethic, the family unit is uh, very important. He said during the COVID lockdown, he was working in his parents' restaurant, cutting food, helping with deliveries, doing counter work. And he said the other thing that he did was he trained in his sister's gym that she owns, a CrossFit gym. And uh, he did those workouts to help him keep fit. And he said, keep a sanity as well. So I think many of us can uh, empathize with that one. And he said that uh, he was watching videos of his opponents too. So he focused a lot on off-court stuff. I suppose that's the time to do it, isn't it? Also caught up with other sports that he maybe doesn't normally have time to do. He loves F1, tennis. He's a big fan of UFC or the MMA, mixed martial arts. And, of course, no surprises that he's a big fan of uh, Conor McGregor. Well overhit by Claire Booth. Yeah, lovely jump smash first and then came to the net, played the kill. Really nicely done by Nat Wynn, who has been very good in this first half of the game. And goes into the interval with an 11-7 lead. We have seen some flashes from Luca Klebut. Let's see how things happen in the second half of this first game. So the second half of this game, that win is up against uh, Luca Clebout of France. He's got a four-point lead here, the Irishman. And he pulls one back, Clebout, who describes his play as consistent and fast with a good rhythm of playing. And I think he's uh, taken some time to get into that rhythm. But uh, perhaps once he gets into that rhythm, he'll feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, he knew what was gonna happen next, drew his opponent in and then killed it off at the net. That's good work from Claire Boots. Yeah, just dropped it nicely with the vertical racket and then finished it off nicely. First the jump smash and then the net kill. From Win, he's done that a couple times already. Nicely. Clebut 
Claire Boot says, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, his father and brother used to play. And now his coach is his brother in the academy that they have in Bordeaux, France. His father is a sports teacher and used to play football at a good level in France. So sports certainly running through his family's veins. He says he loves Rafael Nadal. Sometimes he identifies with Nadal the way he fights on court. Nadal, of course, playing well right now in the Australian Open and won yesterday. Just making sure the uh, court is completely wiped down. Right, so we're going to get on with things here with uh, Win. Three points clear. Yeah, that is uh, well out, isn't it, for a win? That's frustrating, isn't it, for Clairboot? Because he started to apply a little bit of pressure there on Wynn, but allows the Irishman to get back to his three point lead, which he's stubbornly not letting go of. At no point in this match has Clairboot had the lead. He's been on the attack a lot, hasn't he, Wynn? He's not let up in that sense. So what he likes about badminton, it's a very comprehensive sport that combines mental and physical attributes. And he said he, need a, he needs a cool head for sp and a speed and agility and good reactions. Not good enough, though, in that point. He said he likes to try and outthink opponents. Right now, he seems to be doing a, a decent job of it. And he's likened badminton to a physical chess game, which I, I quite like that description from Wynn. I think he's absolutely right. That's a really good rally that's won in the end by Claire Boots. But it uh, takes us back to the early points played. 59 shots. That is by far the longest rally we've had. But <laughs> it's going to take a lot out of these players, I can tell you. So they'll just take their time to get back to resuming as long as they can. Just eat up a few seconds. Still two in front here, Nat Wynn.
Nicely done by Wynn. <clears throat> Lovely shot from him. I think he did a really good job there, didn't he? That's why you want to see more of from Nat Wynn. And again, back to those three points that we talked about. Well, he's going to challenge that Claire Boot. He felt that was in. And that look, I've got to say, it did look a bit out to me, but uh, might have a point. Oh, that is tight, but it is out for Claire Boot. Unlucky. Well, that win got to the uh, quarterfinals of the last tournament we played in, which was the India Open this last weekend. He got to the quarterfinals, losing to Ung Tso Yong in three. Just picked up in intensity suddenly this rally. Looks like it's another one of those long rallies. And again, it's more unforced errors, I'm afraid, for Luca Clebut. And he's now five behind. It's the biggest lead that Wynn has had in this match so far. He's looking good here. Clebut himself was also at the Indian Open. He won the first round match against Priyanshu Rajwat in three but then lost to the same man who beat Win in the quarterfinals, and that was Ung Tse Yong, and that was in the round of 16. Well, he's hit that really well. Good attack here from Klebut, but it's a fantastic drop from Win that puts him up 18-12. Great change of angle quickly, all of a sudden, from Nat Wynn. He let that one go. That was a bit of a misjudgment there from uh, Wynn. And again, these points are taking a long, long time. Well, Claire Boot says that... Uh, when he's not on the court, he likes to play other sports like paddle. Uh, if you don't know what paddle is, well, it's a kind of a mix between tennis and squash. Played uh, very much in Europe. Also likes to play football uh, with friends. And he likes other games like escape game, enigmas, sudoku, crosswords that uh, stimulate the mind. Cerebral stuff.
Nicely done by Wynn, who's now up to 19. Two away from taking this first game and six points ahead of his opponent. That is out. A little bit of a, an acknowledgement there, the apology from Wynn. And he's got six game points right off the net. That one just danced on it, didn't it? A lovely, lovely jump smash from Klebut into that far corner. Wynn wasn't going to get to that. This will give you a good idea of it. Very nicely done. Five game points still for Nat Win. Can he finish this off? Can he see this off now, Win, to take game one? And there you have it, Nat Wynn takes the first game, 21-15 against Luca Klebut. It took him 27 minutes to do that. It was quite the battle, wasn't it, between these two? A number of rallies, but it's the Irishman who has the lead after the first game, and he'll be absolutely delighted with that. So second game now coming up. Nat Win won the first against Luca Klebut, 21-15. And this is the first time in the entire match that Klebut has actually had the lead, right at the beginning of this second game. Very nicely done. Almost effortless there from Nat Wynn.
just wouldn't go for Clairbout, would it? Dance on the net and fell back his side. He's a man, Clairbout, who trains 10 to 12 hours of badminton a week and around six to eight hours of fitness and weights. Lovely slice from Klebut. Ah, lovely couple of uh, shots there from uh, Luca Klebut. We get a view of it here. First with a little lift and then finishing it off nicely. Right after that. But again, another absolutely marathon point, which doesn't help either player, really. Right, here we go then, the resumption of the second game after going two all. And he's taken a little bit more of a lead. Certainly in there for win. While using his big frame there, Claire Boots. Oh. oh. It was not far away. That was close, but he took a bit of a risk, that one. Might have a better view of it this way. Oh, it was tight, wasn't it? So we were talking about Nat Win earlier and he says that he likes badminton as it's an individual sport. You have to take full responsibility for everything. You don't have to rely on others and you control most things. And right now he's in control of this game in the sense that he's up by a game. Now, right now, Clairbout has got the lead in the second game. Just a couple of points. I'm sure he doesn't want to lose out on his first big tournament final. Now, you win. Well, he needs to pull one back here. So win to serve up against Klebut here in the semi-final men's singles side body international. And they are now all level. What he does also, by the way, which is quite interesting, is Win writes motivational notes 
and places them on the end of his bed. So he says it's quite good to wake up to, especially when he's having a tough time. Right now, that's not a tough time. He's got back in the lead again. He said one of his favorite ones is this. It's what you do in the dark that puts you in the light, which I thought was a very poignant phrase. That is a really good shot from Nat Wynn into the far corner. We're going to get another nice look at that. And he's winning 7-6 and 21-15 overall. Says he likes to work extra hard when there's no one else around. Nat Win sometimes likes to add more to his training regime outside of his two sessions a day. Yeah, hard working young man. And uh, similar story to Clavout. He's played that long. These are some of the... Oh, actually, that was just in, wasn't it? Seven all. Nice and tight, this second game. Well, we talked about win with the extra sessions have another look at this drop and then the clear I think it'd be disappointed with that Oh, lovely movement from both players. And he seems to be a bit better at the net, Klebutz. Eight all now. I think he might have felt he should have left that perhaps that win. Well, it's not really working out there. Forty minutes we've played so far, and we're still not closer to knowing who's going to win this match. Though, of course, Winnat is the one in charge, having taken the first game. Yeah, just no answer for that power. 
Take a long while the second one. Keeping his opponent running around a little bit in that win, but Lucas Clairboots clears it very nicely and says anything he can do, I can do better. So 10 all it is into the second game. Now when I said he's used a sports psychologist in the past, talks with coaches, family members, few close friends for motivation. That's outside of the two hours a day of training that he does. But right now he goes into this break 11-10 up against Lucas Clebo of France, though he only has a one-point lead at the break. Well, this is delicately b balanced, isn't it? This uh, second game of the men's singles. Nat Wynn won the first uh, relatively comfortably. Different sort of proposition now in the second. Talked about the training of Wynn. What about the training of Klebut, who says he trains between 10 to 12 hours of badminton, 6 to 8 hours of fitness and weights each week. Good defending here from Nat Wynn. Uh, in the end, it's just too much from Claire Boot. And that means they have drawn level. Well, we're not even through the first game, a second game, and we are almost 45 minutes on the clock for these two. Win just edges ahead here. It is now no longer having consecutive points. It is now really about trading points, isn't it? One by one, they're doing it at the moment. Lovely slice there from Klebut. And a great, great shot from Nat Wynn. Oh, he'll like that one. Just look at how he does this. Eases into the shot. Cross court. No chance for the Frenchman. That's an excellent winner, isn't it? From Nat Wynn. You can just see his teammates, Klebut's teammates, saying, come on, come on. Trying to get behind him. 
if Wynn takes the second game, it's all over. And Clairvout is not going to give up. You can hear that support, can't you, for Wynn? He was waiting for that, waiting to pounce, and he did. That's in, that's in. He's drawn level here, Klebut. Well, Wynn has talked about how he doesn't have to focus on both studies and badminton. He says he can focus much better now, now that he's out of school, as he wasn't training enough back then. He says it's important to do other stuff outside of schooling and badminton, sorry. Delicate drop there played by Win. Still alive though this uh, rally. He's really moving his opponent around. And he's just a bit irritated with himself there, Kleboot. It's a really long rally, isn't it? Another one. That's so many of these. And we said from the very first point, which took a long, long time. It has set the tone. He fell quite short there, didn't he? They're just going back to not win. And he said he's, it's very important for him to do other things outside of badminton. He likes to spend time with his family, which he's done a lot of during this pandemic period. And it's helped him in some ways to improve his game. But his expectations are also higher now. For Klebut. He likes to play other sports, as we said. Does enjoy training with his partners in Bordeaux. There's good players from Algeria like Adel Hamek, Rami Belavi, Sabri Medel. Also plays with Valentin Singer, a young player from France. And also with his brother and his friend Sylvain Ternon. He's one of his best friends in badminton. Yeah, much, much better at the net there for Wynn. He's done well. Again, not a short rally. A long, long point between these two. It's an intense match, this one. But remember, there's 30 places between them in the world rankings at the moment. 44th in the world, Nat Wynn. Luca Clairbout, 74th in the world. So really, in theory, Nat Wynn is the overwhelming favourite here. As I mentioned, they played once before in the Denmark Challenge in 2019, the 5th of November, a long time ago. Almost two and a half years since then. That is a great shot down the line, but uh, surprising perhaps from Wynn that he is going to challenge that. I thought that looked fairly certainly in. Let's see if I'm wrong on that one. It is in. He needed that, didn't he, Claire Boots? Well, because of these long rallies, they're just going to, they're trying to get the court wiped down. They're looking for any possible break. 
Let's remove any moisture so that they might slip. Oh, that's good attack, good intent from Claire Boots. And that will give him some real confidence. A series of attacking shots there means they're now at 15 all. Fantastic to see. Nice jump smash. Little bit of a casual shot there, perhaps, from Clebu. And his uh, teammates are trying whatever they can to keep him motivated, keep him psyched up as much as possible, of course. Easier said than done. It is tiring work out there for these two. Oh, he's found the plenty of court to aim at. Luca Clairboot. He did well there. Just caught in a bit of no man's land. Well, that's nicely done by the Frenchman. And finally, at the business end of this second game, Claire Boot has taken the lead. He's been behind for a lot of it since just before the interval. And all of a sudden, he finds himself in front. Could this be just the change of momentum that he desperately needs to stay in this match? Well, that win, we'll be very happy to get that. To get that point. Very, very tight now. Oh, what a backhand that was. That is probably the shot of the match so far. So beautifully done by Luca Clebut. It was so languid in its movement, but an absolutely brilliant backhand drop. Cross court there, absolutely superb to watch. Bit of slice in it as well. He said that is his favorite shot as well, Luca Clebut. And he certainly, you can see why. 
great way to take the lead. Oh, into the net. And now he's got a two-point cushion here at a very important stage of this match. Is this going into a third? That is what, of course, Claire Booth wants to have to force the issue here. And that win. Knows he's got a final tomorrow. Well, one of them does. That's three points in a row. And three game points now for Klebut. And he is rejuvenated, isn't he? Now, pressure here on Win. He wants to obviously finish this off as he can in two. He's got a lot of work to do here. That is in. It took a little while to think about that, Klebu, to challenge it. Let's see if he might be right. I don't think he will be, personally. Looked uh, fairly convincingly in. And it is. Well, he had the challenge. It's the end of this uh, second game. Why not? Oh, lovely. Oh, it's so tight, this one. Great defensive work from that win. It's tiring. Epic point played. And Claire Boots has drawn level here. Just under an hour. These two are playing a, a mammoth encounter. And it is going to go to the rubber now. So after two games, and that win won the first 21-15. Luka Klebut won the second 21-18. We are going into a third game.
So we're going into game three here between Win Not or Not Win, excuse me, and Luca Klebut. The momentum you feel has shifted to the Frenchman in the uh, last few minutes. They were 17 all, and then he just surged ahead. And uh, Nat Wynn looked just a bit tired. He actually asked if he could have a quick sit down on the advertising boards and was told by the umpire in no uncertain terms that he couldn't do that. So certainly just feeling it now. Anyone's match here now in this men's singles semi-final. The winner will go on to play Arno Merkle, who is from France and the roommate of uh, Luca Klebut. Well, it's nicely done by Wynn <coughs> at the net. Klebut trying to cover it, of course, trying to anticipate, as you can see. Well, again, he's had a, a good start to the second, uh, third game, Klebut. Oh, very nicely done down the line. As we said, he's just got that momentum at the moment. Body language from Nat Wynn is not great at the moment. And remember, he said he's all about the confidence. He's a confident man, but he's not exuding that necessarily at the moment. He's looking a little down on himself. He needs to pick himself up here. Now it's a decent lead here for Klebut. Three points. Lovely drop. Nicely done there from Klebut. That confidence on his part coursing through his veins at the moment. He will say that uh, his best performance to date has been his match against Wang Tsingwei in the Taiwan Open in 2019. He won in three games. He said it wasn't the best result, but it was certainly he was playing at his best then. He'll want to draw upon that today to get to his first ever Super 300 final. He's pulled one back here, Win.
Just seemed a little bit of hesitation. True, a bit of laughter, that one, from uh, the French teammates. Hard work out here for Nguyen, who is trying to get himself back into that groove that we saw him in earlier. Oh, what a sh retrieve there. Wonderful work. Wonderful. He dug that out so well. Really, really nicely done. Watch this reactions here from Klebut. And by the way, I think he's hurt himself, Nat Win. It might be a groin problem. As he uh, stretched. Uh, he's got a problem here, Nat Win. And he has to sit on the ground. It might be a groin issue or a knee issue, perhaps. We're just waiting to see. He's clutching above his knee. Yeah, it's the magic spray on there. So he seems to be okay, not win. Let's see in the point. I did notice in that point, which he eventually lost just now, that he was very restricted in his movement. He wasn't mobile. And, of course, now, if you're Lucas Clairbout, you're going to make him move a fair bit. He's stretching him. And there he's getting the winners again and again. Now, I think this is going to get tougher and tougher. For Nat Win, Clevu with an emphatic winner. Well, he'll take the unforced errors at the moment, won't he, Win? We can see he's very, very labored in his movements at the moment. Just keep an eye on that knee. That's a really good winner down into that far corner. And again, He's just not looking too happy at the moment, Win. It's very different for Claire Boots. That's a nice shot from Win. Oh, 
Well, this is uh, vital points for win. But he's really taking his time between the points. Look at that. You can just see. Even though he's won it, he's just not comfortable, is he? Well, these are all useful points. Well, there's been uh, three unforced errors in the last few minutes. And that's very good news, of course, for Win. He's just let his opponents make those mistakes. Well, this is a really good comeback, isn't it, for Nat Win? Four points in a row. Granted, there are mostly unforced errors. Yeah, he just couldn't get there. And again, if he was perhaps 100%, he might have pushed himself a little bit more. But the good news for Nat Wynn, he's only got within two of Claire Boots, and I'm not sure that he's going to continue. Let's see now. Wynn is having a talk with the umpire. Right now, he's trailing 9-11 in the third game. He's asking for the medical personnel to come along. And uh, we might see another retirement here. Let's uh, keep an eye on this. Well, as you can see, he's getting more and more treatment. Nat Win, he is going to continue, but he's clearly not 100%. He's really, really taking his time, and you can you can understand it's it's not easy, obviously. He's trying to pick himself up here as much as he can. Oh, that is a very good winner. But again, as he just walks back to his position you can see he's not comfortable but at least he's only a point behind Luca Klebut who surely will be noticing this as well uh, 
That's a good shot for the backhand. Very nicely done. The win has uh, possibly hurt himself even further here. And he stretched himself, didn't he, for that one? That's a good, good point, wasn't it, from Luca Klebut? He's asked for more of a wipe down. The umpire isn't having any of it. He says, please get on with the game. Still asking for the wipe down. He's not happy with the state of the court. I think that's just um, state of mind as well at the moment. It's a lot going on with him. And he needs to focus on the game at hand. He's two points behind his opponent. Still a lot to play for. <coughs> that didn't make it over the net from Klebut. Oh, that might have well been out, but he played that shot anyway. That win. Now let's have a look. Maybe another. Yeah, that was going to be tight. He took a gamble and he lost. The demeanor isn't great at the moment, is it? for that win. That's a lovely slice drop shot on the forehand. Very nicely done. Well, I think we'll be absolutely delighted with that. That's a great shot. Luca. Klebut is playing some lovely, exquisite shots now. I think he's in his element, isn't he? Good reactions there from the Irishman. Pull one back here, two points behind. That win was, of course, in the Olympics in Group F, where he uh, three ahead now, Klebut. Yeah, and that win uh, <coughs> beat Niluka Karuraratne of Sri Lanka in straight games. And then he'd be quite pleased that he pushed Wang away of uh, Chinese Taipei to three matches, three games. So that is something, isn't it? Once away was the tenth seed in that one. But a proud moment for him. That win at the Olympics just a few months ago. In Tokyo. And that is out. Said he wanted to uh, replicate something like what his uh, international teammate had done. Scott Evans, and that was to 
rip off his shirt when he got to the quarterfinals of the Olympics in 2016 in Rio. Oh, great reactions. Unlucky. From Claire Boat. Claire Boat. He's hanging in there, isn't he, Win. This is an epic encounter. 81 minutes. I suppose it kind of makes up for the last uh, match we had, which was only went into one game and then a retirement by Evgenia Kosetskaya. This one has gone the absolute distance, hasn't it? And he's limping again, isn't he? I think, I'm afraid, win now. It's probably just lost his way. It's four points clear for Claire Boot. He's probably now feeling he has got a chance here. But uh, win is getting the odd point here and there. Opportunity here to just go to 19 and make it four point cushion for Klebut. Good power from the Frenchman, right as his opponent. Yeah, didn't react too well to that one, did he? That shot. Oh, exchange of drives, and it's five match points here for Luca Klebut. And it's a good way to end it. Luca Klebut in an epic, epic encounter against Nat Win. He lost the first, quite comfortably won that Nat win. But he came back well, Luka Klebut, in the second, where he was level with Nat win at 17 all and powered through. Win then took a bit of an injury, it looked like, with his knee. And uh, really, Luka Klebut never looked back. Played some exquisite shots to win that 15-21, 21-18, 21-15. And he moves into the final. It'll be an all-French final here at the Side Modi International 2022. But a really long match here of 84 minutes. It is now equal in duration with the match earlier on between the other men's single semi-final, Arno Merkley beating Mitun Manjunath. So the two men's singles have really been long, long affairs, both 84 minutes long. <laughs> they'll be tired and even more interestingly enough they are both roommates as well at the same hotel we're at so we're going to go have a chat with them I'm sure later on this evening and see how things are going to be later on when they will face off in the men's singles final
So the officials walking out for the next match here on court one. And it's going to be the women's doubles semi-final. Here at the BBDUP Badminton Academy in Lucknow, India. Side Modi International 2022. 